The weekend is here. Let's paint something fast and. My what? Hey, how about I paint two miniatures I always wanted to get painted? My favorite Warhammer heroes. But I'll do it a little bit different. How about I try these guys on them? Buckle up, Brush Lickers. It's going to be a wild ride. Hello, guys. My name is Miguel. This is Russell Wise. Speed paints have been out for a while and I miss the release as usual because I live in the sticks and people don't want to send me the cool stuff. And I, I just want to be trendy like all those other cool YouTubers out there. So my review is late, but as the self-proclaimed washes guy, it is my duty to give you my two cents on them and to give you my best advice about the elephant in the room, reactivation. To do all this, my idea is to only use the base set to paint my two favorite Warhammer Fantasy characters. If I can make the most out of this $50 starter set, this means anyone who wants to start painting with it also can do that. And the real test is painting old school heavy metal style using only the colors here. I will start by using Crusader skin to paint the flesh on both Gotrek and Felix. I like the consistency of the paints, which flow differently from Citadel Contrast. The coverage is consistent and it has a pale appearance, but I think we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Let's discuss what I mean by old school heavy metal style. And of course, we are going to end up mentioning our saint and savior, Mr. Mike McVeigh. Mr. McVeigh wrote a series of books during the Middle Hammer era to teach us how to paint our miniatures in the colorful appearance we saw in the pages of White Dwarf. In fact, he is the epitome of a style in which the miniatures were painted in the 90s. My favorite. I was under the impression that it had been Mike who had painted these two back then, but he quickly corrected me on Instagram to let me know he suspected it had been Kev White who had done those. Anyways, back to painting. There are a couple of key features in our characters we really need to focus on. Let's start with Gotrek's beard and crest. First, we paint the whole area with Zealot Yellow. Then we use Fire Giant Orange, focusing on the recesses and leaving a little yellow on the edges. For Felix, we will start with his hair by painting it with Pallid Bone. Once that dries, we use Zealot Yellow, leaving the edges uncovered and focusing in the recesses. Last, in the deeper areas, we use a little bit of Fire Giant Orange. The deep red cape is one of the most famous features of Felix's appearance and it deserves to look the part. Once again, we are going to build up the color now using Zealot Yellow, which once dry, we paint over with Fire Giant Orange. To finish it off, for now, we will use Blood Red. The boots Felix wear are painted with pallid bone. This tan color is also used now to darken some of the recesses in the flesh of both Felix and Gotrek. Once the first dries, I give a second coat on Felix's boots to add depth. Orc skin is used to paint Felix's tunic, belt gems, and the details and runes on Karagul. Hey, fun fact. Felix's first version in the game did not have this magical sword, but a rather bland sword of leaping bronze, which gave him plus two attacks. Karagul was a later addition, a magical sword that was made to kill dragons, and I don't want to spoil anything regarding the sword, as it has a couple of story arcs in the novel, so it is for sure a very important item for Felix, and it deserves the cool design you can see in the miniature. We do the same for Gotrek, in this case for the studs and the handle of his famous axe. As well as the pants and the decoration inside the blade of his fearsome godlike magical weapon. Hylor Blue is next, with which I will paint the eye patch and the ankle wraps on the Slayer, as well as Felix's breeches. Now that the coat of pallet bone is dry, we can work on a second coat of hardened leather on top of it. This darker brown paint is also going to be used to further improve the contrast within the recesses of the flesh and hair. 
Notice how I use it only in the deep areas I want to darken. Alright, now it is time to use something not included in the speed paint starter set. A metallic paint. I'm going to save time and money by just using one single metallic paint. Now check the video in the link above to learn tricks to do this with all your minis. I paint the chainmail, the weapons and all other metallic things in our heroes with this color. To darken the steel items, I will use Gravelord Grey. I will also paint the eyes of both miniatures with it, and further darken those deep finger and toe recesses in Godrake and Felix. In fact, anywhere I feel the deep areas are not dark enough, I add some water to this color, and then I use this mix to further add a little extra saturation. And now it is time to paint the gold. The golden areas are painted now with Silot Yellow. This is all you need. Gotrek has lots of gold on him, something he loves, like all dwarves. Felix's belt and sword pommel and hilt are also golden. Gotrek's axe has also two areas made of bronze or copper which I paint now with Fire Giant Orange. Once the basic paint job is now done, it is time to move on to the next phase. We are now at the painting stage where we have reached basically the limitations of this brush. We're gonna get this paint job from something quick and, you know, simply useful for tabletop to something that is a little bit higher than the average standard that we are looking at right now. We're gonna try to go old school heavy metal and for that we need a smaller brush. With this in mind I get my Da Vinci and Windsor and Newton brushes. First item in the agenda is giving some highlights to the flesh areas to add depth. I mix pure white paint with our Crusader skin to desaturate the color and at first I start with a mixture that is not too light just enough to make a difference with the undertone. There are certain areas that you need to focus on like the knuckles, the shoulders of Gotrek. And especially the face on Felix. Once again, I refer to the master Mike McVeigh, whom with this simple graph on this book, explain it better. Add more white and highlight again in the same zones, but smaller areas. And give a very, very highlight on Gotrek's huge nails. He needs that. With now pure white, I carefully paint the eyes on the heroes and add a final highlight on the gems, the runes, Paint the stripes in the breeches. Highlight the boots and the cape of Helix. It is here where something quite remarkable happens. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the speed paints in famous reactivation, which I will talk about in a minute. Activation issues are real, but you can use them to your advantage. The thing here is to saturate the colors with pure white paint, and it's going to mix with the previous coat of whatever color you use with the speed paints. Pure white highlights are going to take a while to build on top of this, or you can varnish the miniatures, but that is something that I'm going to do after uh, I do a little bit more retouching here. I have two options here. I can use my usual spray. Or I can use my new airbrush that I promised you guys I was not going to use an airbrush for this because no, that's part of the deal. 
I'm really scared. Honestly, I'm really scared, okay? So just wish me luck because I don't want to screw this up right now. First, let me use the metallic paint to add a highlight to the blades of the weapons and other details on Gotrek and Felix. So using white paint is a great way to highlight speed paints because instead of mixing colors, we will achieve very soft degradés as the previous layer of speed paint will mix with the white and become a desaturated version of itself. The more layers you add on top of it, the more desaturated the mixture becomes, up to a point where pure white highlights are possible. I love it. Everybody complains about this and it's one of the best things ever. Using purple, now I paint Gotrex tattoos. There are no official version of how they look, so I just get creative painting some interesting patterns like runes, the tail of a worm, etc. I just paint with a very careful approach and a very thin brush to obtain the effect I want to achieve. This dark purple color is also perfect for painting the pupils too, which I do now. It also can be used to do some extra shading wherever needed instead of using pure black. And now it is the time when I'm going to varnish the miniatures. I sprayed very light thin coats, allow them to fully dry and then apply them again. I am using Testor's Shine and Dual Coat one after the other. And this is how the miniatures look once finished. So there you go, yes, you can paint at a decent tabletop standard using only one box of paints, yes. Speed paints are awesome, and although they reactivate, not only can you prevent that by varnishing in between coats, but you should use that to your advantage. And yes, I enjoyed painting my favorite heroes in Warhammer Fantasy way more than I expected, and I'm glad I made this video for all of you to enjoy. Watch this nest, and remember, my name is Miguel, this is Rush the Wash, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Un beso, adios.